This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and today I want to get back to the Inkscape Explained series. I had to put it aside for a little while over the summer because I was busy with uh, a lot of different things going on, but uh, I wanted to make a video today about saving and exporting uh, graphics with Inkscape because this is a question that I get asked about a lot in the comments section, so I figured this would be a good video to make. So uh, mainly what I'm going to talk about is exporting files so that they have a transparent background, kind of like what this thumbnail suggests with the, uh, the checkerboard background. So uh, let me go to Inkscape, and this is a fresh document here in Inkscape. I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu and the, uh, the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. And I'm just going to create a random graphic. I'm going to create a couple of squares, uh, a couple of circles actually. I'll duplicate that, make that red. Put this over here, maybe make another one, make that blue, put that down there. Now let's say for whatever reason that's our graphic and we want to export this graphic so that it has a transparent background. Uh, we, we would use the file export, uh, export bitmap menu, which is right here. And when you click on that, you're going to get this and you're going to have these four options up top, which is page. And when you have page selected, it's going to export everything within the page border. So if I export this relative to the page, everything inside this border, the graphic inside this border will be exported and the top of this will not. And if I, if I click on drawing, that means everything inside the border and outside the border. So the entire canvas, wherever there's graphics on the entire canvas will be exported when we have drawing selected. And if I choose selection, um, it's not going to let me choose that now because uh, I don't have anything selected. If I select this, now it will automatically go to selection and I can export just that selection. So let me show you uh, as an example of how this works. So I'm going to click on page and over here you're going to get the DPI, which the, uh, the width and the size. I'll go over that in a minute. This is going to export this as a .png graphic and .png is a great format to use uh, for the web and for mobile applications, pretty much anything with a digital display because uh, .png, um, long story short, it makes it, uh, it allows you to work with multiple channels. It allows you to have a transparent background, which a .jpeg doesn't. So let me export this here relative to the page. And I'm going to save this just to um, my desktop. And I'm just going to save this as test one. Click save and I'll click export and it's going to export it and let me minimize the screen here and I'll show you. If you notice it exported everything within that page border like I said and cut off the part of the graphic that was sticking out from that page border. And as you can see here with the checkerboard background there is no background. It's a transparent background. You could take that graphic and lay it onto a website or onto a background or you could, be, you could overlay it anywhere and the background would show through this graphic except for where these three circles are. Uh, I know with the Inkscape canvas it's white here, but it's not actually white in color. It's technically transparent. So um, let me close out of that and I'll show you another example, okay? I'm going to click on just these. I'm going to select just these and I'm going to go to File, Export Bitmap. And when I have objects selected, it's going to automatically have selection chosen. So that's what I want to do here. I'm just going to click Browse. I'll go to the desktop. I'm just going to save this as Test 2. Click Save and I'm going to export that. And let me open this up. And you'll see now we have our graphic with the transparent background showing through around the edges. Okay, now there's something you should keep in mind when doing this. There's one thing that, um, and, I, and I know a lot of people make this mistake because I get asked about this a lot. They'll say they, they'll transport a graphic, but the ch other parts of the graphic are showing through. Uh, let me click on just this circle right here. And I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. And if you notice with the select tool, I have this blue circle selected. You notice the dotted uh, rectangle going around the perimeter. Everything within, everything within the boundaries of that rectangle is going to be what's exported. So part of that red will be exported and part of that uh, red and black over here and the part of this black down here, that'll be exported as well. And I'll show you as an example. I'll save this as uh, test three. And I'll export that. And let me minimize this. And I'll open up test three and you'll notice part of the background got exported there as well. So if we want to export just the blue circle, 
we have to make sure that we take the blue circle and move it out of the way of everything else before we export it. And when if you do that, uh, it'll show through perfectly with a transparent background and without anything else showing through. So that's one thing to keep in mind when exporting something. And another thing is, uh, let me go to file, let me go back to uh, export bitmap. You notice down here we have DPI. DPI stands for dots per inch. And uh, it's uh, if you want to look it up, it's, it's, it's not that difficult, but uh, it's a little difficult for me to explain. I'd have to get into a whole different segment about that. But basically what you need to know about DPI is when you're creating something for print. Like let's say, for example, you're designing a business card and a business card is going to be 3.5 inches by 2 inches. And the print shop tells you that they need it to be at uh, 350 DPI or 300 DPI. Those are the two standard DPI settings that print shops uh, request in my experience. This will allow you to set the DPI right here. So let me show you an example. I'm going to zoom into 100%. Let's just create uh, an example business card. And uh, I'll change the width and the height of this to 3.5, 3.5 by 2 inches just like a standard business card. And I'll just put some, I'll just make some kind of random design on top of it, like that. And there's our business card. We'll click on that, it's 3.5 by two inches. Let me set this back to pixels. You'll notice that in pixels, that's 315 by 180. Now with all of that selected, if I go to File, Export Bitmap, it's gonna be at 315 by 180 if we export it at 90 DPI, which is the default in Inkscape. But if we're gonna send this off to print and the print shop requires that this is at 350 DPI, what we could do is just change the DPI to 350. And if I go ahead and click on this, you'll notice it changes the size. It almost makes it like three times bigger or three and a half times bigger, something like that. I forget the mathematical breakdown, but it makes it a lot bigger. So. Uh, let me let me uh, export that as well. Uh, I'll save that as test five, and I'll click export. And if you notice here, it's 315 by 180. But since we exported it at 350 DPI, it's now 1225 by 700. So that pretty much covers exporting graphics with Inkscape. Um, you know what, let me save this. I'll put this over here within the border. That pretty much covers uh, exporting. You now know, what, with what I told you, you know pretty much everything you need to know in order to like export a logo onto a website or icons for a, a mobile application or whatever. Uh, it's always good to use PNG so you get that alpha channel which gives you the transparent background. So uh, let's talk about saving files now. Um, let's say I created all of this right here. I created this big giant mess and I've been working on this for hours and for whatever reason this was my design that I've been working on for hours and I wanted to save this but I wanted to save it in a format where I can come right back to it and edit it uh, later on. The format we would save it as is a .svg which is the standard for Inkscape. So I'd go to File, Save As and we could save it to the desktop and you'll notice we have dot uh, dot svg inkscape svg is what you want to use you don't want to use um, plain svg in my experience it works out a lot better when you use dot svg and if you look down this list here there's a ton of different formats uh, you could save this as I don't even know what the majority of these are I only use in my in, in my own experience I only use dot svg dot pdf which is important to know because dot pdf is uh, the format I like to save it as when sending something off to print just about every print shop I've ever worked with accepts .pdf files, so I always like to use .pdf. Um, you could save it as a Cairo.png, which this is not a this is not a good way to save a PNG graphic. You're much better off using export bitmap because when you export bitmap, it exports it exports it exactly as is depicted on the canvas. With something to do with Cairo, like it it, it alters the colors, it makes it look different. Uh, I forget exactly what it does, but it just it makes it look not right. And I've had uh, some of you have asked me in the comments. You said, "Hey, I've saved a .png file with Inkscape, and it looked awful. Uh, how do you get better results?" This is why that happened is because you went to File Save As and use .png. You should always use the export feature. Okay, so we have SVG, PDF, and another format I like to use is .eps, which is a combination of like vectors and 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 raster images. .eps is good because it could open up with Illustrator 
or Coral Draw. But the same thing with .svg. An Inkscape SVG will open perfectly with Illustrator. I do it all the time. I very often create stuff in Inkscape and then I'll switch over to Windows and open it up with Illustrator and all of the nodes and the paths are there exactly as I left it when I created it in Inkscape. So um, let me save this as a PDF now. Inkscape with, with, with an Inkscape pretty SVG is pretty much self-explanatory. You just save it as SVG. It'll be the default. I'm just going to save it as drawing.svg. Save. And there's all of our mess right there. And I'll close out of this. And I can go ahead and open this back up. Open with Inkscape. And there's our graphic. We can continue, we can continue working on what we were working on here. Now, if I want to save this as a file, uh, a PDF file, what I can do is go to File, Save As, and I'll go to the drop-down and I'll choose PDF. I'll save it as drawing.pdf and I'll click Save. And after we click Save, we're going to get this little menu that pops up. And uh, what I usually use is uh, this PDF 1.5 and 1.4. I usually just leave this alone. I don't know what the difference between the two is. I just leave it as 1.5. It hasn't given me a problem yet. Convert text to paths. That's good. You should always, it's good to have that checked. Uh, I always convert text to a path before I even save it. I actually didn't even know this option was here. But whenever you send a PDF file off to a print shop, they're going to ask that you convert the text to curves. Uh, in, in Illustrator, they're called curves, but in Inkscape, they're called paths. So when they say convert all the text to curves, this is what they really mean. Convert it all to paths. And I usually do that beforehand um, in Inkscape. Like right now, that's, um, that's a text object. I'll just go to path object to path and that's now converted to a path or a curve however you want to call it. Now let me go back to the PDF menu. Okay so um, PDF latex, uh, omit text in PDF and create latex. I don't know what that is. I've never used that. Rasterized filter effects. Um, that's good to leave checked. Like let's say for example you use a filter or even a blur or a clip or a mask or something like that. These things usually don't transfer very well when you save them as a PDF. So uh, when you when you uh, rasterize it, uh, it, it'll make it transfer nicer. If it, you'll be able to see the effects you made when you open up the PDF file. And again, we'll go back to the DPI. So let's say we created our business card. We made it 3.5 by 2 inches. The print shop wants it at 350 uh, DPI, so we just save it as 350. And that's how we can save it. Export area is the drawing. Uh, I guess what they mean is everything, including everything outside of the page border. Export area um, is page. Okay, yeah, export area is the page. And li uh, limit export to the object with ID. And that's that's something completely different. This is beyond uh, um, anything I've gone over in my tutorials. I, don't, I haven't even really used the object IDs. Object ID is when you right click on an object and you can give it an ID, which is uh, I only had to use that once when I was creating the new icons to put into Inkscape here. But uh, aside from that, it's really not something you have to worry about. So I'll just go ahead and save that. I'll save it at 90 DPI and click Save. And it should save everything within the page border uh, unless I check something different. And I'll go ahead and open up the PDF. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. And there's our, there's our page. It saved everything within the page border because that's the parameters that we had checked. And um, I think that should pretty much cover it. I mean, there's a bunch of other files you could save this as. Whoops, wrong menu. There's a bunch of different files you could save this as, like uh, SVGZ. I'm not really sure what that is. I've never really messed with that. FX, um, uh, zip, you got um, optimized SVG. I don't know what that is. Apparently, you could save it as a GIMP file, a .x. CF if you're working with layers in Inkscape and you want to take that file and open it up in GIMP and have all of the layers preserved, you can use that option right there. Uh, you got SK1 vector graphics. I haven't used SK1 yet, but I heard it has CMYK support, so I may check that out. Uh, Windows Metafile, GIMP palette, um, guess from extension. Haven't tried that either. The main things that I use from here are SVG, EPS, and PDF. So that I think that covers everything with uh, exporting files and saving files using Inkscape. But if there's anything in particular you'd like me to uh, cover, just go ahead and leave a comment and I'll, uh, I'll uh, see what I can do to help you out. So uh, I think that covers it. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.